If you are tech savvy and understand things like NVMe, M.2, PCI Express, USB 3.2 Gen 2, this video might not be for you. If what I just said sounds like a foreign language, then maybe stick around. I could potentially save you a few hundred dollars and point you in the right direction when it comes to buying a new Apple Mac computer in 2024. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is UK. Today we're going to talk about the Apple storage scam and the Apple storage scam goes hand in hand with the Apple memory scam. This is very well known and uh, basically the Apple tax for purchasing Apple products. Don't get me wrong, I love Apple. I have a lot of Apple devices. The hardware they build is, is truly phenomenal. However, uh, there's a tax to the, these products. Uh, that tax comes in the form of hardwired and soldered components directly to the motherboard, which leads to no upgradability in the future. What you buy now in 2024 with most Apple Macs is what you're gonna have for the rest of that piece of hardware's life. So, with that said, let's talk really quick about memory because I don't wanna go down this rabbit hole too far and I don't want this to get complicated. If you are looking to purchase any Apple Mac computer in 2024 and the base option it is trying to sell you is eight gigabytes of RAM or memory, upgrade this. Bite the bullet as an expensive upgrade, just upgrade this. In this day and age, software developers aren't developing applications and software to run with only a few gigabytes of available memory. If you have a computer in 2024 that only has eight gigabytes of memory and you have, let's say, a Chrome tab open with several tabs, you have your mail client, uh, maybe you know one or two other applications running simultaneously, you'll just run into memory problems. And with Apple Mac computers, this isn't something you can just upgrade along the way. You are stuck with what you buy. So bite the bullet, buy a minimum of 16 gig. 16 gig is enough for just about everybody in an everyday use scenario. Don't buy the eight gig model of any of the Apple Mac products. Uh, you have to bite the bullet, pay the Apple tax and go for the 16 gig option. This video isn't about the Apple memory scam pricing. This is about the Apple storage price gouging and what you can do to save a few hundred dollars, get more storage, and um, there are a couple of other benefits as well. So let, let's talk about what they are. This is uh, an NVMe SSD. What does that mean? It's basically the PC equivalent of what's soldered directly onto your motherboard with any Mac computer in 2024 for storage. So if you get 512 gigabytes of storage, the chip will be soldered directly onto the motherboard of your computer. This is the PC equivalent of that speed of chip. This is a NVMe external solid state drive. It's exactly the same as what Apple solder directly onto their motherboards externally in an enclosure. So this particular one that I purchased off Amazon was I believe $19, this is the SSK M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. That's a lot of gobbledygook. It's essentially a little aluminum box which holds a hard drive and then gives you the ability to plug that hard drive directly into your computer. The beauty and the reason of why I suggest going down this route is the speed these drives are about four times as fast as what you would get with a traditional plug and play USB hard drive, a USB, they call them backup drives. You can use this drive in your workflow. The speed of this drive is almost as fast as that very fast hard soldered drive inside your Mac. It's not gonna come as a complete solution. You are gonna have to make it. It's one screw and the one that I bought even came with a screwdriver. Two components, you've got the enclosure, and then inside the enclosure, you've got the hard drive itself. This is the hard drive, it has a 
little heat pad over it to help dissipate the heat through the enclosure just to keep it a little bit cooler because these things can get pretty hot. They get pretty hot because they're pretty fast. I strongly advise whichever Apple Mac computer you decide to go with after upgrading the memory to 16 gigabytes, you go with the base level of storage. If that's 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes, depending on which model you're looking at, I would always recommend going with the base level of storage and then purchasing one of these aftermarket storage expansions. This is without a doubt the most economical way, but also the most convenient. Think about this. If you have a power surge, the com electrical components on your iMac or Mac Studio are damaged. That hard drive will likely be damaged too. It is soldered to the motherboard. Having your data backed up also provides a bunch of other advantages and to do so cheaply and efficiently is definitely what I would recommend. Use the storage that comes, that base level storage that comes with the Mac as your day-to-day -day workflow, applications you use, stuff like that, and then everything else, let's stick on one of these. Super fast, this thing will give you 5,000 megabytes a second. And in layman's terms, that's fast, that's blazing fast. Copying files to and from this, Using this as a workflow device, I edit directly off these, they are that fast. So that would be my recommendation in 2024, if you're thinking about purchasing a Mac, stay away from the storage upgrades, purchase a NVMe drive, and you will be good to go. I've left links to all of the products I've mentioned in this video, they are affiliate links down in the description. If you ever buy anything from those, I do get a little kickback, uh, but that helps the channel and helps me keep making more videos like this. I hope this was helpful. I hope I can save you some money or at least point you in the right direction of what configuration of a Mac you should probably be buying in 2024. Well, that'll do it for this video. Uh, I hope I was able to add some value to you today. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, why not consider subscribing? Maybe even click that like button down below. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I've been UK. You've been fantastic. I will see you in the next one.